Well, good morning, everybody. How are we all? Welcome back to the vlog and welcome to my very makeshift dressing room. This is what we're dealing with right now. It's temporary. Most of my clothes are still in boxes, which I'll show you in a minute. But before we get into this video, I need to take this opportunity and this moment to say the biggest, and I am talking biggest, thank you to all of you who have not only commented on my last video or watched it, but also gone over to Instagram and commented on my post over there. And so many of you have DM'd me regarding buying my first home. And I am gonna be honest, I could never have imagined the love I have received about it all. Truthfully, I feel like whenever you post anything online that is maybe like an achievement, like buying a house or anything else it might be, I do always feel a little bit nervous that it might come across as bragging. So when I pushed that video live and I pushed the post live, you know, I'm always thinking like, what kind of reaction am I gonna get? But I have received nothing but just kindness. And I just cannot thank you all enough. Like genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I am so incredibly grateful. The comments and the messages I've received haven't just been like congratulations. I mean, some of them have, and like that is more than enough. I don't expect anything, you know, it's fine. Lots of the messages have said things like, you've been here since I lived at my parents' house, since I worked at the pub. Some of you remember me moving to London. Lots of you have been here for the entire journey. Not just buying my own home, but like, my life journey, really. It truly feels like you're all as happy for me as my friends and family are. Like, it genuinely means so much. And I know I say thank you a lot to you all, but you just need to know how thankful I really am. And the last few days of me just reading everything has just, like, really brought home how lucky I am to have you all. And I truly believe that I have one of the best communities on the internet. Like, you really are one in a million. And I feel like grateful is my new favorite word, but it's the only way to describe how I feel about everything. I am eternally grateful to all of you and everything. Anyway, I have now said my bit. I'm sorry if that made any of you cringe, but I couldn't carry on with the vlogs without just expressing my gratitude to you all. But I'm actually needing to do my makeup. I've just put a little bit of moisturizer. My skin feels so smooth, but I have to say it feels very tight and dry. I think I'm gonna move to the bathroom to do my makeup though, because the light is a little bit better in there. I have to say the background in here is not very aesthetic, but it's just what we're dealing with for now. Everything's a little bit of work in progress, but it's fine. I definitely need my sun cream on today because it is a beautiful sunny day, thank God, because we've had so much rain in the UK over the last week. Like, it has been terrible. So this sunny day is very, very welcomed. I feel like you're all gonna really, hopefully, enjoy today's vlog. It's kind of gonna be the first vlog at home. I'm gonna show you around a little bit more. I'm gonna tell you the plans. I have for the house, I have a lot. <laughs> I think Reese and I are also gonna go for a roast dinner. And I did actually ask over on my Instagram this week if you guys had any questions for me, because I did notice in some of the comments I had in my last video, there were a lot of questions and I totally get it, you know, I have questions too. So we'll sit down later and I'll try my best to answer some of them for you all. Remember in a vlog just recently, I tried the Shiseido Revitalescent Skin Glow Foundation and I kind of never really gave you a full review, but I feel like it's hard to give a review on a foundation after wearing it just once. But I have since that video, which has been maybe nearly two weeks, I've worn this every single day, mainly because my other foundations have been in a box. It's the only one I kept out, but it just gave me lots of time to see if I liked it. And my honest verdict on it is I absolutely love it. It's a gorgeous foundation. Some of you might remember, I did kind of feel like the shade I got was a little bit too light for me but it does definitely oxidize on your skin a little bit. And I actually think it's a really great shade. It's definitely one of those, your skin but better foundations. It feels super lightweight. I would say for a night out, especially if you like to wear full coverage makeup, it isn't necessarily full coverage, but it's definitely buildable. But for day to day where you just want glowy skin, look super natural and flawless, this is honestly a 10 out of 10 foundation. I really, really rate it. By the way, how cute is this new packaging? on the YSL bronzers, like, look at this. Wow, I have to say, it does feel really strange standing up, doing my makeup. Many of you will know at my apartment, I always used to sit at my desk, but that desk actually got thrown away because when I was moving, it broke. So, hence why I'm standing here, but I have to say, the lighting in this bathroom is unreal. Like, even if it's not a sunny day, especially in the afternoons, the lighting is great. I mean, it is actually only half 10 in the morning, the lighting's still not bad, but as I say, in the afternoons, it's even better. I do definitely need to dedicate a space, though, 
for a dressing table because I much prefer doing my makeup sat down. Maybe that's because I'm lazy. By the way, this is the Rodeal Banana Low Lighter. And if you've watched me do my makeup before, which I'm probably guessing most of you have because I do it a lot in my vlogs, then you will know how much I love this stuff. It's so good for brightening your face up. It does also conceal, but more than anything, it brightens without making your face cakey. It's honestly one of my holy grail products and I did actually work with them this week on Instagram and they gave me a discount code which was FREYA15 which gets you 15% off of most things on their website. I think it's except for kits but it definitely gets you 15% off of this and I know how many of you love this because I banged on about it a lot so if you need to stock up 15% off is a pretty good saving. I'll tell you something I'm going to really need your help on over the next few weeks is making decisions. I've already had to make some big decisions this week regarding windows, front doors, and things like that. And something I really struggle with is decision making. Like, tell me why it's so hard. I feel like when you have choice and the decisions are expensive and quite big, I just really crumble under the pressure. So I have actually already been popping a few things over on my home account on Instagram, which is Freya Killian Home, if you don't follow me on there. Or if you don't follow me on Instagram in general, you should be over there because I do post more regularly than I do on YouTube, just because it's quicker and easier. I've already been chatting over there with lots of you regarding things like windows, doors, as I already said, flooring choices, like that is something I'm really, really struggling with right now. And I haven't even started thinking, well, I have started thinking, that's a lie, but I haven't even started really looking as such at furniture. So I'm so happy to hear any of your advice and your experiences. For example, I thought I wanted bifold doors across the back of the house. I'll show you what I'm planning on doing. But after a lot of thought and consideration, I kind of thought maybe French doors would look nicer. There is currently French doors in there and I actually really like them, but they need replacing because they're old. And lots of you have told me that bifolds look great, but especially in the UK because we don't get that many hot days. You don't tend to open them very much. And with a bifold, you have to almost like open, not the entire thing, but you can't just open like a little window, like the whole door needs to be opened in order just to let a little bit of air in. A lot of people have also told me that their bifolds have broken. And I don't know, I just feel like, I was definitely in two minds, whether to do bifolds or French doors, but all of the feedback I've had have definitely pushed me towards the French door vibe. And I actually do think they would suit the space more as well, really. By the way, another thing I got from Rodeal, this is actually new to them, this is their glass high highlighter like look at this it just gives you a really natural highlight without looking too over the top or false it's gorgeous and another product that's really buildable and I love it you can also get 15% off of this this sounds like an ad I mean technically it is because I work with them on Instagram but it's not because they're not paying me for this I just love the products and so I'm telling you about it I'm gonna set everything today with the all hours hyper finish powder from YSL this one is in the shade 01 I always wonder how people who do their makeup live without a beauty blender like genuinely this is one of the products in my makeup bag that I couldn't live without. It's just incredible. It makes everything go on so much more flawlessly than a brush does. That powder is gorgeous. So is the packaging, like look at this. A little bit of the Refi Brow Tint on my eyebrows. This is in the shade Soft Brown, love this stuff. Vive Lip Liner in the shade Brat on my lips. This heated eyelash curler that my mum got me for Christmas has honestly changed my life did i tell you this in a recent vlog i might have done so i'm sorry if i'm repeating myself but it basically makes your eyelashes look like you've had lvl like it's incredible and it makes your eyelashes stay curled all day long i'm actually going to use a new mascara today you know how much i love the l'oreal telescopic which is this one just here i mean i've honestly been using this for years but they also do l'oreal telescopic lift i'm not actually saying it is new i don't know if it is new but like this is new to me if that makes sense it has made my eyelashes Go so clumpy. Oh my god. No, what is this? No. I kind of was able to revive my eyelashes, but I can't say they look their best. But for my lips, I'm going to do this lip oil, which is from Guerlain. And it's so beautiful. Let me just quickly just show you the packaging before I put it on. Like, look how pretty this is. This is also a lip balm from them. And the packaging of this is even more beautiful. Like, look at that. I'm such a sucker for a lip oil. Like, it's my favourite thing ever. So glossy, not sticky, goes on like butter. Love it. And last but not least, Charlotte Tilbury Setting Spray, which makes my makeup stay in place all day long. And I rate it so much. It's in my mouth. Genuinely, from my experience, it's incredible stuff. And the reason I say my experience is I actually was reading some comments on my YouTube shorts the other day saying that it makes their makeup slide off, which I'm really shocked at because I just feel like it makes my makeup stay on for like 10 hours or longer. And I'm someone that usually finds that my makeup slides off. 
And I think a lot of people were thinking that I've been talking about it so much because I'm sponsored by Charlotte Tilbury. And I'd just like to say, I will never talk about a product that I don't like, whether it's sponsored or not. And that is the truth of it. But I am not sponsored by Charlotte Tilbury. I wish I was. Maybe one day I'll be working with them. But genuinely, that product works for me. And any products you see me talk highly about is because I really rate them. And of course, there are going to be things that like, you know, for example, the milk primer. I've spoken about that before. I bloody hate that stuff. It doesn't work for me at all. But other people rave about it and say how great it is. But I can only talk from my experience. And all of the products that I talk highly about, I genuinely, genuinely rate. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't say it. This is my very quick makeup and hair today. I'm putting a little bit of oil in the front of my hair because I kind of singed it with my Dyson the day before yesterday. So it's gone a little bit spiky. By the way, this oil is so cheap. It's the Pantene Pro-V Keratin Protect Oil. I swear to you, I have been using this stuff for years. Like, you get it from Savers, you get it from Boots, Tesco's, places like that. I love my Kerastase oil, which is here. You guys know this is Chef's Kiss. So good, smells incredible, but it's a little bit pricey, you know? This is just great for every day. I apply it when my hair is wet. So just before I style it, and I do it again like now. It's also a dry oil. I really struggled to say that. Dry oil. They're both dry oils. They don't make your hair greasy. You use them sparingly though. But as I say, they're both great. But this one is a hell of a lot cheaper. So for every day, I feel like this is great. Okay, let's do a house tour. I'm joking. I'm not going to give you a full tour. But you're going to see a lot because we're doing a lot. And um, I've got a lot to show you, so let's go. Okay, let's start in the room that I've just been in because, I mean, like, we're here. But this is currently my dressing room. As you can see, that is the ensuite bathroom we were just in. Um, everything is a little bit messy, can't lie, there's things on the floor and stuff. But as you can see, my clothes are in here currently. However, this is actually going to turn into the master bedroom. Because hopefully, if everything goes to plan... It's going to get extended, this room, because, let me show you, it goes into the eaves. So this is a really, really big cupboard at the moment. It's kind of a little bit spooky, I can't lie. You could definitely make this like a little walk-in wardrobe, but what is hopefully going to happen is the house is going to get extended to this point here. And then this slanted bit of roof in here, which is currently in the eaves, is going to get pushed back to create a much bigger bedroom. So this is going to be one of the first of many jobs and it will just create a much bigger, brighter and area space for a bedroom. And through here, this is the ensuite bathroom, which I have to say is just covered in my stuff. There's no real storage. I mean, there is under the sink, but I just have a lot of beauty stuff. This is all the stuff that I use every single day. This actually sounds like it is for your, what rhymes with Vanny? And if you know, you might be understanding what I mean, but I can assure you it is not for that part of my body. It is in fact for my face, just to confirm. It's just a really great cream for sensitive skin, okay? Um, but yeah, this is all of the stuff I use every day. And then over this side of the bathroom, I actually have this trolley, which rolls around. It's very cool. I actually got this when I moved into my apartment. Um, but it's from Ikea and it is absolutely full to the brim with skincare, more makeup and on the bottom shelf hair care products, eyelashes and brushes. So these are all products that I don't necessarily use every day but I do love and I've kind of made it into sections although it's all kind of fallen over. But here we have Elizabeth Arden, Estee Lauder, Lancome, Cordely, Clay de Peau, Le Mer, Elemis, Avant. Have I said them all? I think I have, but I've kind of like put them into sections. So I do use these products genuinely, but not every single day. I mean, imagine putting this on your face every single day. It would be quite a task, but I do love all of the things that you see in here. And same with this makeup. It's maybe not my everyday makeup, but they are definitely products that I do use. Obviously, same again with hair care. I am like the biggest Kerastase fan, so I always have a lot on standby. But over here are more, so kind of like my everyday products, like my makeup, my skin and me, you know, the Kerastase cream that I use, just everything is just kind of just here and it all looks very messy, but this bathroom will end up being the bathroom to the master bedroom. So my things won't be in here. They'll be in a different bathroom, but for now, like this is where we're at. The bathroom itself is actually really nice and it doesn't necessarily need replacing. It's not something I'm gonna do in a rush, this room, um, but, I do have other kind of vibes for this, but it, I think it's gonna be quite easy to redo. I mean, here's someone that's never redone a bathroom before in their life saying this, but I feel like all of the basics are there. Like I love this alcove, you can put your products in and I love the kind of the layout, but I just think I would prefer like a different vanity and different tiles and things like that. But as I say, not in a rush. I think it's perfectly fine as it is for now. And this is another bedroom that is currently housing all of my boxes. 
So I'm just gonna leave this for now. The door is being shut on this room. This room is probably gonna be extended as well, like the other one, because it's got the same situation through this door. But yeah, for now I'm just shutting the door and it's just staying like this. I will definitely show you the master bedroom, but for now, let's go downstairs. Now you saw this on the last vlog, but this is currently the living room. And this is actually gonna stay the main living room. Um, I am gonna change the colors, things are gonna get painted. Obviously I'm gonna get new furniture, but to be honest, this room is pretty much gonna stay exactly how it is. I'm gonna have a TV. I think I'm gonna get one of the Samsung frame TVs to put up here. I do adore the fireplace. I'm gonna be honest, I love this. I think it's beautiful. I have seen another fireplace online, which I love even more, um, but I don't know if I'm gonna change it. It's something I haven't quite decided yet, but I am gonna change the fireplace itself, but maybe not the surround. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna change the paint colors. We're gonna go for a bit of a different vibe in here, but overall, I think this is a fantastic room. It's a really lovely size. And I just, I'm just gonna redecorate. So if I pan around to here, you will see that I have this kind of double door situation going on. And for this space, I'm thinking of adding some internal doors. Um, I think it's really nice being open plan, but for the plans that I have, which is to knock this wall through, to make the kitchen and the dining room one big space. I feel like it'd be nice to section off the living room. Something I would really, really, really love to do, but I don't know if it'd be really possible in terms of the ceiling height, but I would love to turn this into an archway. I mean, everything I want to do just seems to be so bloody expensive. So whether I'm gonna do that or not, who knows? But that is definitely like, that would be a dream to be fair, to turn that into an arch, but we'll see how that goes. Now we're into what is currently the dining area. And as you can see, this space is very echoey and very empty. I don't own any dining furniture, so this room is just, yeah, empty. But the plan is, is I'm gonna knock this wall through, not me personally, okay? I said it like I was gonna do it, but this wall is gonna get knocked through into the kitchen because this is what is next door. So all of this here is all gonna be gone because this wall is gonna be gone, if that makes sense. I do absolutely love this kitchen though. Like, look how gorgeous it is. It's so beautiful quality. And truthfully, I wouldn't choose anything that dissimilar to this. I probably would have gone for a different color, maybe white, but I'm hoping, I've spoken to a carpenter, I'm hoping that I can save this kitchen and just kind of, it's gonna be rejigged. So for example, this part of the kitchen here, which is all gonna be knocked away, I'm hoping can be moved to here. So fingers crossed it works out, because if it does, it's gonna save me an awful lot of money. And kitchens are a huge expense, so I'm hoping to save the carcass of the kitchen, the doors, probably have them sprayed and have the worktops changed, just because it's gonna be hard to move those around apparently. So it probably will look like a different kitchen, but it won't have cost me thousands and thousands of pounds that a new kitchen would cost, if that makes any sense. Then what else is happening in here is the window ledge you're currently sat on is being knocked out to become French doors because obviously this is gonna become one big living space. So I'm gonna have two sets of French doors next to each other. I did debate on getting a bifold. But as I've already said, I decided against it. <laughs> as of today, and I'm gonna do two sets of French doors, which I think are gonna look really nice. There are currently a set of doors in the kitchen. They're gonna be bricked up and it's just gonna become more kitchen workspace. So everything's just being rejigged. I'm working with what I've got. Now we just go outside because I'm gonna take you into the garage. So you saw this on the last vlog, but this is currently the garage. And let me tell you, it is a big, big space. It's not gonna quite show you how big it is on camera, but it's huge. I mean, look how gorgeous the carpets are. I love them. Um, but all jokes aside, it's a really just huge garage and at the moment it's a bit of a wasted space. So the plan is, is to convert it into another sitting area, but more like a snug sitting area. There was talks of having kind of like a cinema room. So this would all be bricked up. There would be no windows. I don't really love that idea because I want this to be an area that, you know, you can come and sit and have a coffee and it be like a really cozy, lovely space. So you might see in the corner here is the boiler. So what is gonna happen is a wall is gonna get built across here, which is actually gonna house a utility room. So it's gonna have all of my washing machine and tumble dryer and things like that, which I don't currently own, guys. I don't actually have a washing machine right now, which is probably something I should get on with buying. But anyway, this is gonna be a utility room and pantry, because it's gonna lead on from the kitchen. Then this garage is gonna have a separate entrance, which is gonna be knocked through from here, because this is actually into the hallway, which is currently a brick wall, but it's gonna get knocked through to create, as I said, a very cozy living room. So I'm hoping to have like a media wall put up here, 
the TV. I mean, you're gonna have to use your imagination right now because, you know, this is what we're currently dealing with, but I can see the vision, okay? And I feel like it's gonna look great. And I feel like it's gonna be a really lovely room. I have a bay window on the front, which is gonna mirror the other side of the house. And I'm really excited about this room because I feel like it's gonna be the room that changes the most in the entire house. And it's something I can really kind of make my own and go to town with the interiors, if you know what I mean. So now we're back in the house and into the hallway. And you know I said whilst we was in the garage, that there's going to be an entrance from the hall this is where the entrance hopefully is going to be so where this radiator is this needs to get moved but this is going to be the new entrance way into the new living room which is currently the garage but you know you see the visions you can see the walls are all quite marked there must have been a picture up there now we're entering a room which to be quite frank with you is an absolute mess i mean it's just full of boxes i've been trying to organize but as you can see, this is the situation. Um, but this will actually become my office. I don't know why the camera's not focusing. I feel like it's tired of the gray walls. But over here, I'm thinking of having a shelving unit built. I think my desk is gonna be here. I actually want to have like a seating area built around this window area. I think it would look kind of cute. Um, but yeah, this is just gonna be an area where I can work from because as you guys know I work from home and a goal of mine even though it's quite hard if you do work from home but a goal of mine is to kind of try and separate work from home so it's going to be so lovely to have an office space it means I won't be sat on the sofa working I mean there'll probably be days where I do do that but you know it just gives me a separation from home life and work life so I'm really excited to get this room sort of going and this is another room that other than decor is not being touched so I feel like this could be one of the rooms that will get completed the soonest. Fingers crossed. Oh, as I just came through the living room, I wanted to show you this that my friends got me. It's so cute. as a little moving in gift. I think this is like meant to be a little egg basket that you just put on your kitchen side. It's all from anthropology and it's really cute. And they actually have matching mugs, which I'm going to get. And this is a little butter. Would you call it a holder? I don't really know. But look, when you pick it up, it says hello. How cute is that? I love it. I've still got all of the upstairs to show you, but I feel like... I should answer some questions that I've been getting a lot of like repeat questions, you know, so I'm going to try and answer those. And something else you might be thinking is why are you changing the garage to a sitting room if you've already got this? But I feel like this is going to be more of a kind of formal sort of sitting area. It's going to, of course, going to be able to sit in it, but I don't think it's going to give cozy vibes. So I want the other room to be more of like a snug and somewhere you can just sit, cuddle up, watch TV and it just be like a much more cozy, chilled space. Um, where I think this is going to be a little bit more formal, which sounds very posh, doesn't it? <laughs> but my mum and dad actually have something similar at their house, like a sort of more formal sitting room and a snug, and it just really works. Um, and as I feel like the garage is going to be a wasted space, um, I just think that it would be good. Anyway, just in case any of you had that question. But I asked you all on Instagram if you had any questions, and a lot of them are truthfully the same. So I thought we could just go through them together now. Okay, the first question I've seen, and it's actually one that I really love, so I'm gonna answer this. It says, do you want to get a pet for your new home? Well, many of you will probably already know because I've spoken about it a lot, but I feel like on Instagram, but not on vlog really. But I have wanted to get myself a cat for the longest time. The obsession started pretty much ever since I moved to London. You know how much I love my cat, Chris? which if you've watched my vlog since living in Kent, Chris used to feature quite heavily. Chris was actually rescued from Qatar. My sister found him in a bin, just in case you're not familiar with the story. She found him in a bin on the way to work. It was a little tiny kitten. She took him to the vet. The vet said he was only like two days old. He's gonna die. He's not with his mum. And just to take him home, keep him warm and like let him die peacefully. Well, he didn't pass away. And instead he grew into a big cat, which my sister ended up getting all of his vaccines and flying him back to the UK where he now lives with my mum and dad. It's kind of a crazy story. It's a little bit longer than that, but like that is the base of it. My sister's honestly incredible for doing it and it cost her a fortune to get him vaccinated and everything. Um, but he is just such a lovely cat. He's a little bit crazy, but I adore him. And we always had cats growing up. I would really love to get my own cat. Reese isn't so keen on the idea, but we can kind of talk him round. He thinks it would be better to get a dog, um, but I just feel like they're a really big commitment where cats kind of look after themselves. You know, they're just really easy going and they also give you like lots of love and attention, but they take themselves for walks. Although all that being said, I think what does scare me about getting a cat is it getting stolen. I know that if you get a pedigree, it is actually quite common, sadly, for them to get stolen. I feel like that would actually break my heart. Chris actually went missing for four days. 
years ago and it was the most traumatic four days of my life like we were searching him luckily we found him he was stuck up a tree the most typical cat thing to do he was up so high in this tree near the woods where my parents live and my brother had to get this huge ladder because the fire brigade i don't think they come out for things like cats anymore well, they wouldn't come out anyway so yeah my brother had to get this big ladder but anyway yeah that's the only thing i worry about with a cat is it running away or someone else taking it you know lots of you asking which area that i bought it in I feel like I answered this, but maybe I didn't make it clear enough, but I actually bought my house in Surrey and it's an area just outside of London. It's on the border, but the commute into London is so, so easy. In lots of areas of Surrey, there are trains that run into London in about 20, 25 minutes, which is actually sometimes quicker than it would take you from Chelsea to get into Central, which is kind of insane. Um, but it gives you the whole kind of countryside life it's quieter there's fields there's greenery you get a lot more for your money as well but it's still within a commuting distance to london which in my opinion makes it so great and that's why i was so sold on the area another question that i've seen a lot of is you all asking do you think i will miss living in london and obviously at the moment it's really hard to tell i've only been in here a week and it's been very exciting and it all feels very new but so far i couldn't miss it less like i feel like i'd done my london life and i'd experienced it but i was so ready to get out i mean there's loads of positives to live in there like you've got amazing restaurants on your doorstep deliveroo with all the choice that deliveroo bought same day shopping was another great one you know like on zara matches Netta Porter, I mean, it was lethal. Being able to walk to Harrods was also incredible. And as you guys know, I used to walk there a lot, but I was just tired of the apartment I was living in. It felt like I'd really outgrown the space. Um, and as I, as you already know, like I really, really wanted to buy. And as I've already said as well, like that area, you know, you just don't get a lot for your money. Like a two bed apartment is like 1.3 million pounds. In lots of areas of Surrey, you'd get, you know a four bed detached house for that and i just don't personally feel like london is worth the money that's just my personal opinion i know people that love it and feel like they will never move and think it's worth every single penny and like that is absolutely fine the great thing in life is the fact that we all have a different opinions and different you know thoughts on what we think is good but for me, you know, I've just kind of done it. And at the moment, I don't think I miss it. I do think I will miss being able to walk to Harrods, but I know that if I wanted to get there, it's not that long of a drive. I could jump on the train if I wanted to and go, and I will still do that, I'm sure, a couple of times a month. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much my opinion on it now. Um, and I just don't think there'll be anything other than concierge, you know. I think I'm gonna miss my concierge who took all of my parcels. I think I'm gonna miss having them. Um, but other than that, you know, I, I can't think of anything else that I'll miss. Next question is, you said you loved the house, that's why you bought it, but now you are changing everything, why? I feel like this is a really good question and it probably is gonna confuse a lot of you. Um, but just as a bit of backstory, so when I first ever started looking at buying a house, I was looking at new builds. That was mainly because that is what my budget stretched to. And new builds, they're great because you just move straight into them. Brilliant, you just put your furniture in and that's it. Then over time, I decided that I wanted to buy something that I could renovate because I could probably add a little bit of value to it and I could really make it my own. So after looking at lots of houses to renovate, both online and in real life, I actually ended up thinking it was a much bigger task than I wanted to take on for my first property. I feel like one day I probably will do like a huge renovation. But right now, I just felt like it didn't really like fit. And I have no experience with renovating whatsoever. And I was told by lots of builders that I'd spoken to and friends and family, you know, that right now renovating is super costly because the cost of materials have gone up so much. And I just felt like it seemed like a lot of stress. So in the end, I really wanted to find a house that wasn't a new build, that didn't necessarily need renovating, but was of an age that I could definitely do some improvements. I could extend it if I wanted to. I could improve it if I wanted to, but I could also live in it after I bought it because lots of the reno houses I'd looked at were like unlivable. You'd have to rent somewhere else for a year whilst it was being done up. Where this house is perfectly livable. Like you could just move in. You could like even just clean the walls or paint the walls you could move in and not touch it and that's what i love about it but it's also got so much potential and so with this house i really feel like i hit like a jackpot for me where you know i'm definitely going to be able to improve it but 
it's perfectly livable and it's beautiful how it is. But yeah, I've got lots of plans and lots of things are definitely going to be done. And the reason that I'm just doing it sort of now and not hanging around, I mean, I'm not actually doing it right now, but the reason, you know, things are moving ahead so quickly is because I feel like I want to get new furniture, I want to change the floor, I want to change the wall colour, but what is the point in me changing the floors now, changing the wall colour, and then in six months time or a year deciding that I'm going to knock that wall through, cause loads of dust, then the floor is going to have to get changed again because it doesn't match or whatever. Instead of that, I just thought, right, let's just get on with it. Let's just do it straight away and start to change things. I mean, not next week, but definitely in the next few months, I'm going to start some work because I just think I may as well just do it all in one go and if I'm completely truthful this house was a little bit under budget so therefore I've got a little bit of money sort of left over to play with which means I can get started straight away. Hopefully that answers quite a few of your questions because a lot of you were asking that and I totally get it it's like why would you say you loved a house and then you're gonna rip it apart like it doesn't really make sense does it? But the foundations of a great house is already here I just feel like it can be made even better. Another thing I've mentioned a few times is the fact that I have become quite fussy with what I'd wanted. It was becoming a bit of an issue because the criteria and the non-negotiables I had were so slim. And I used to look at houses on Rightmove and I think it's a really nice house, but like, I don't like the street or it's a really nice house, but you know, there's no parking or whatever it might be, you know, the rooms are too small. Like you could go on forever, but someone here has asked me what were my non-negotiables when looking for a house. And as I say, I feel like I ended up with a lot, but I feel like my top like few was number one the area i feel like you can change things about a house but you can't change where it is so i was really set on a good area and therefore a nice road another thing i really wanted was not to be too overlooked i feel like that's a real luxury and it's something you do not get in london unless you have well even if you have like millions of pounds in london you're still overlooked um, but in sorry you can definitely be a little bit more flexible with that and i feel like you can find houses that aren't overlooked there's a lot more trees and things like that, which kind of keep things a little bit more private. So that was something else I really looked for. I also wanted the house to be detached. I would have loved to drive and at a push, it would have been great if it was gated. And I'm sorry this sounds very like over the top, doesn't it? But as I said, I'd looked for such a long time. I had become really, really fussy. Oh, and I also wanted a house, like I already explained, that wasn't too new, that wasn't too old, that needed renovating, had potential, but you could also live in it. So all of those things combined, I mean, I had come to sort of the realization I wasn't gonna find everything because, you know, it's it's really hard to find, especially given my budget, you know, we've I had a budget and if you had like five million pounds to spend, boy, you'd get all that and more, but I didn't have five million pounds to spend. So, you know, you have to sort of be realistic, but, the reason I said I loved this house is it ticked all of those boxes, which I can't really quite believe, even to the point that I'm sat in here, I'm like, how did that happen? I don't really know. But they always say that good things come to those who wait. I do think that that saying is a little bit wrong because if you just sit and wait for something, nothing's gonna really happen. You need to go out looking for it or go out working for it. But I definitely think I went out looking for something and I was trying to find a needle in the haystack and I found the needle in the haystack, like it just happened, you know? I'm not saying that they don't exist as well for like the budget, of course they do, but they're just fewer and further between. So yeah, that's that on that one and I just think be fussy, you know? To a certain extent, of course, but um, but yeah, if you wait long enough, I feel like you'll find it. Loads of you asking about where this painting is from. I actually had this about three months after I moved into my London apartment and I still love it so much. It's from an artist called Isabella Grace Fuller. I'll put her Instagram somewhere around here. So if you wanna go and check her out, you can. She does the most incredible pieces. She can custom make them for your space. So different sizes. And now she does like all different sort of colors and textures. Um, but she's really, really talented. And I actually feel like I might get some more art off of her for the rest of the house. Um, but yeah, it's a painting that I've had for ages and I really, really love. A lot of you asking, where do you get home inspiration from? Truthfully, Pinterest is my best friend for everything, even outfit inspiration. I mean, don't get me wrong, I get a lot from Instagram. I think there's fantastic Instagram accounts out there for home, but also for fashion, <laughs> including me, I'm joking. But seriously, you can find incredible people on like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you can just find anything. But Pinterest is so great because you can search anything. So let's say for example, like, I want to look at wooden kitchen doors. I could type that in and it's gonna give me thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of great wooden kitchen door inspo. So for most things, I run to Pinterest 
and that is where I get lots of my inspo, especially for the home. Someone said, did you have a sick worried feeling about buying your house? Feeling this way buying mine. Guys, I can't even tell you. I have been having nightmares for the last like, well, since I knew I was buying this house for the last two, three months. I've been having all these nightmares, like the front door was like a borrower. Like I remember one of the dreams was like, I couldn't get through the front door because the door was built so small and then the builder said they couldn't make it any bigger. I had dreams about like the roof falling off. I was also like in the non-dream side of things, so sort of like anxious and overthinking it because it's such a big thing, isn't it? Like you're literally signing a mortgage that's a long bloody time with these monthly repayments that you need to make every single month. It's a big thing. Um, so I think it's so normal to feel that way. And if you ask my agent, Leona, I'm sure you're watching this, she will know how much of a nightmare I've been the last few months. I've had multiple breakdowns. I've been an absolute pain in the ass, to be quite honest with you. And I think it all just came down to the stress, the anxiety, and just the overall sheer sort of worry the whole thing gave me. I feel a lot better now we're here. Of course, you still do think, God, this was a bloody big thing to do, but I feel like once you've done it, the excitement and the happiness of it happening kind of takes over from the worry. That's from my experience anyway. Um, I think it's totally normal to feel worried about the whole thing. My camera battery is about to die, but I do have one on standby. Okay, someone asked, when will renovations begin? Well, if I had my way tomorrow, okay? I want this wall to be knocked out tomorrow. I don't honestly know at this point, but I'm thinking in the next couple of weeks, truthfully. I've already had two architects come around. I've had a carpenter come around. I've had two sets of builders. I've had the windows measured up. <laughs> I've been here a week. I've been busy. And yeah, I've had a few quotes for the windows because all the windows need replacing. Um, but as I've already said, I want the work to get going quickly um, because... I'm just very impatient as a person. I've also been drawing plans for the work that I want to be carried out even before like we moved in. So for the last two months, I've already decided what I wanted to do to the place. This is also interesting. You know, in the last vlog, I said about the flooring and I said, I don't know whether to do like straight wood planks. I don't know what that's called, by the way. Has it got a style name? Just normal straight planks? Or I said herringbone and I've always loved herringbone, but then I felt like, has it been overdone or is it classic? But someone has written here, not a question, but a thousand percent think you should do herringbone. I love the French style inspo. And I think because I'm like keeping the French doors, I feel like the herringbone would actually look really nice, but I'm still a little bit unsure. So please let me know your thoughts on that because it's something I'm definitely still toying with. Lots of you asking for full tours of the house and I've already mentioned it, but like it's not gonna be done. Um, I'm obviously gonna show you the rooms. I've shown you a lot in this vlog already, but like a walkthrough tour is not gonna happen. But I will definitely be showing you like the before and afters of all the work. I feel like the next few weeks, sorry, not even weeks, sorry, the next few months, year, probably a couple years, the vlog is gonna be really different. And I'm really excited for that. I mean, of course, I'm still gonna be buying handbags. We're still gonna be doing clothes try-ons. I'm still gonna be shopping because that is me. And I've been this way since I started earning money, even before then actually, because I was young and still telling my mum in Matalan that I wanted this particular top or this particular dress. But I've always loved clothes, shoes, bags, fashion, all the rest of it. So that's not gonna change. But I mean, we're gonna have a lot more vlogs at home. We're gonna be renovating. And I feel like in that sense, things are gonna change a lot, but I'm so excited for it. And yeah, I'm really, I feel like we call everything a journey, but I'm really excited to take you on sort of the renovation journey and I'm gonna be showing you all of that. Um, so yeah, even though you might not get a whole walkthrough floor tour, floor tour, house tour, you know what I mean? Um, you'll be seeing loads. So, you know, you're gonna feel like you had one. Someone asked, very curious where you lived in London. Can you share which apartment? Well, maybe not the exact apartment, maybe you mean apartment block, but I lived on a really big complex. And there's actually a development called Chelsea Creek. Um, lots of people live there, but I think it's a fantastic place to live. It's on the border of Chelsea and Fulham. It's just off of the King's Road. You can walk to Harrods, you can walk down the King's Road. It's quiet, it's safe. It, the apartments like are really lovely. I really have nothing negative to say other than the fact that I had mice for a bit, you know, that wasn't great. But overall, in terms of the place itself, it was fab. The location was brilliant. There's a lot of building work going on there. I had building work outside my apartment the whole time I lived there, the three years, it, you know, it's still ongoing. But the flats are so well insulated there, like you don't hear anything. You don't hear your neighbors upstairs, like, I didn't have neighbours one side of me because I was the end of the building, which was really great because it meant I got those big windows 
that other flats didn't get so my apartment was much lighter than most people's um but yeah it, you don't actually hear the noise from outside so the building work doesn't annoy you in the summer if you had the door open it would be a bit but the flats were all air conditioned so you didn't really open the doors but yeah overall it's a bloody great place to live and i found it by pure accident just on right move i didn't know the area i mean i knew the king's road but I didn't really know the area, but it was the greatest accident I ever made, to be honest. It was a really, really great place to live. And I tell people all the time, you know, if you're looking for a place in London to live, it's great. It's just also down the road from Parsons Green, which is a really lovely area. Fulham itself is lovely. Yeah, so it's southwest London, in case you don't know London at all. It's southwest London and yeah, 10 out of 10 location if you ask me. I mean, unless you've got crazy amounts of money and you can afford to live in places like Belgravia or like Mayfair. But like we're talking like 10k a week rent i mean you know it's just an insane a little bit more of an affordable budget is that area all that being said it's not all that cheap either but that's just london for you someone actually asked did you find any mice when you packed up your flat well i actually have a story that i never told you all and i'm not really going to divulge into it too much but the mice got caught it was the most bizarre thing because i never saw a mouse i heard them and i did find the odd poo here and there when i've been away and i moved the cushion on my sofa and there was all poo, and I thought, this bloody mouse has just been chilling, watching TV, feet up on the sofa and pooed all over it, vile. But I never saw them, but they did get caught. It wasn't great, but no one was having mice living with you, you know? <laughs> and the last question I'm gonna answer, because I feel like it takes us quite nicely onto what I'm actually about to do, is how big is your garden? Can I please see it? Truthfully, the garden isn't actually all that big. And that was probably one of the only things that I felt slightly negative about this house, but it's not negative for me because I did not want a big garden. I mean, gardening is just not my forte. And I mean, maybe one day it will be, but I just didn't want a big garden. Um, so yeah, it's not huge, but for me it's the perfect size because you've got grass, you've got a nice resin area that I can have some barbecue furniture. I think I'm actually going to do like a little fire area. I'll once again insert some photos of my ideas for the garden. Um, but it's big enough, but it's not going to be really hard to maintain, hopefully. <laughs> um, but I'm actually going to take you out there because I need to put some seed in the bird feeders because I've had squirrels, I've had birds all come in to feed off of those because my mum filled them up when she came but I also really want to show you a tree that's in the garden which sounds a bit weird but honestly wait until you see it do you remember that haul that I did with everything that I bought from Space NK and two of the things that I picked up were these Diptyque hand soap well it's an exfoliator and also the hand moisturizer well it's actually body moisturizer to be fair but I said I bought them for my future home and one day they would sit beside my sink and at the time I was being a little bit sneaky because I already knew I was buying this house well I was hoping the sale was going to go through so I was buying them for this home but I was kind of telling you future home just because you know I wasn't sure it was going to happen but here they are I said I was going to do it and I did I was actually going to save them for when the kitchen is redone and everything's in place but then I just thought you know what Let's just use them. You know, they can be refilled. That's the luxury of the fact that they're glass and you can refill them. So yeah, I think they look great. It's making me very happy. I don't really know what's happened to my daffodils. Like, why are they just dead? They never even opened up. They're just dead. Another thing on my kitchen side, do you remember for Christmas, my mum and dad got me this orange juicer. I haven't used it yet, but it's so pretty. I'm also going to get the matching toaster and the kettle, the Smeg ones. Um, but that was another gift that my mum and dad bought because they knew I was moving and I said to you the same thing that I'm hopefully going to have this in my house one day and here it is on the kitchen side. It's not going to stay here, I'm going to make it look a bit more aesthetic but for now it's just, it's here. My mum got me this bird feeder, well she got the birds a bird feeder basically from Amazon but like how does this work? I don't understand, like, it kind of comes up like this but I can't make it stay, it just kind of falls back down. Like where do you put the bird seed? I feel like I need to FaceTime her. The bird whisperer is not answering the phone, but look how much bird feed she got me. Like seriously, wow. High energy it will attract a range of species. Well, I've had robins, blue tits, blackbirds. Funny thing is, is my nan always says that my granddad is a blackbird and my uncle Neville, who also passed away, she says he's a robin. And I've had both a robin and a blackbird in my garden every day. Kind of cute. It still doesn't answer how the hell this works. Like, I think I can take it off. Okay. Do I put the seed in there? Squirrels are still gonna get this though. They're absolutely nuts. They're hanging upside down to get all the stuff. A 
and then you must like hang it to a tree. Okay, let's go put it outside. I need to get myself some garden shoes or some Crocs. Do you think I've done this one a little bit too low? I don't know, maybe I should have done it higher like this one. But that looks good. Apparently the squirrels can't get into it as much, but I think they'll get into it even more, that one. They've literally been hanging upside down to be able to eat these fat balls. <laughs> or suet balls, whatever they're meant to be called. Look how pretty some of the flowers are in my garden. I have no idea what this is called, but it's a very beautiful plant. Look at it, stunning. And this is the tree. I feel really excited about, sorry the trees out here are really tall, but look, this is going to blossom in a couple of weeks. I don't know whether it's going to be pink blossom or white blossom, but apparently it's a magnolia tree. My friend Abby pointed it out and she came round and said, oh my god, this is going to flower so nicely in a couple of weeks. I'm so excited to see this. Honestly, what's my life come to? Most of these bird feeders, by the way, including like the little house, these ones and these ones over here were already here when we got here. My mum just got this one because she thinks it's better for the birds. Here's another really gorgeous flower. I don't know what this is called either. It's very pretty. I've had to zoom in a long way. But can you see who's on the bird feeder? <laughs> I can't zoom in anymore. But it's the squirrel. I feel like he's eating all of the seeds. Good morning, guys. I call this look I've got going on right now tragic, because I look tragic, you feel me? Um, I've actually just finished editing this vlog and I didn't realize how long it was gonna be. I mean, we didn't even go anywhere, but I feel like I gave you a little bit of an insight into the house. We've still got all of the upstairs to see and I've got so much more to show you and tell you and everything else, but I'm gonna leave this vlog here. Today is currently Monday and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I can get this video live for this evening. So as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I love you all very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Take care, guys. Lots of love. Goodbye.